Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, drawing, uh, Digital Drawing with Ray. I am Ray and I'm here to bring you another tutorial. Today I am featuring Clip Studio Paint Pro, as I usually do. Today we're going to talk a little bit about shading and highlighting. <clears throat> I've been asked about this a lot, and uh, it, it can be very difficult, but I'm going to show you a fairly easy way to do it. So let's start by opening up a new file, so File New. I'm not going to play with any of these settings, we're just going to hit OK. Okay, so we have a new file here under illustration. First thing I'm going to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, start this layer here. I'm going to pick the figure and I'm going to choose the ellipse. Shift will hold, if you hold down shift while moving your pen, you'll get a perfect circle. And there we go. So for the first one, I think I'm going to, since I already have it in pink, I'm going to leave it pink and I'm going to fill it. So I'll pull bucket tool and just fill it with the paint. There we go. And at this point, I'm going to lock the transparent pixels. The reason why I do that is so it will not draw outside of this circle. So because this is a smaller circle, we're going to just do just a few colors. So we're starting with the base color of pink. And I like to use the fill pen when I'm doing this. So I'm going to come down here to like midway on the color wheel, just so we have a darker tone. And I'm just going to put in just a little bit of a dark tone. Again, this is a smaller one, a smaller um, circle, so I don't want to put too many in. Okay, we're going to go back halfway from there to the original. And I'm going to put in another tone right over that. Okay, so we do have a little bit more room. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to add another tone. Actually, we're going to make it a little bit brighter because it's barely able to be seen. Okay, so we're going to move a little bit more over to the right, towards white. And finally, I'm going to go almost white, but not totally the white. I'm just going to put something in there. OK, so the excuse me, the shortcut key for blending is J. So if we hit that, <clears throat> excuse me, that will bring up our blend tool. Let's start with the original regular blend. OK, so here we're going to we're going to make it very, very simple. I try to keep the circle the, the size about this size because otherwise it takes a really long time. So I always go from light from dark to light. So we're just going to take this color, this dark color, and we're going to pull it in to the color that's the, the next lightest color. We're just going to keep pulling that in. You'll start to see the color stain, so to speak. And you'll see it start to kind of like fill into the color next to it. Now, again, we're doing dark to light. So we're taking from the dark to the lighter color. And now let's go from the lighter color back into the dark color. So we want to get like a nice, even kind of spread here. And again, dark to light, light to dark, until you see something that kind of looks like this, where you have a couple of tones and a couple of values that, you know, they aren't too messy in there and they're not, they, they, they're blended in a way that it doesn't look too fake. So, okay, let's take the second tone and we're going to brush that in to the next lightest tone. And you can see that that's already starting to stain that area because this is a much lighter color than we were using before. And now we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to take the light and bring it into the dark. Now, I like to take the really dark areas here and brush them through too, just because it helps to give a little bit more depth. And it also helps to not make it too, too bright because we really don't want it too bright. Okay, that looks fairly good to me. Okay, so let's go into this next, take this, this tone and move it into the next lightest color. And this is where you're going to start to see a lot more color change, color variation, because we're getting, it's starting to get lighter now. And I want to pull again from this really dark area, just to kind of pull it in, and then this light area to pull it out. And we're just going to keep pulling back and forth, back and forth, until we're happy with that kind of result before we move on to the next color. Okay, so this last color is the brightest color, and I'm going to, again, take this darker color here and just push it in. Just, just move the color. That's all we're doing. We're doing nothing other than pushing color one way and then the other. You can see here that it's really starting to get a nice shine here. But I don't want a big shine here, so I want to pull more of that darker color in. I want a smaller area of shine. Again, the, the light is coming from this direction, so we don't want it too shiny because then it's not going to look realistic. And I mean, we're not looking for photorealism, but we want something that looks nicely blended. All right, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to just take this a little bit because it's, there we go. 
All right, so if you see here, there's some striation lines. You have the, the, the brightest areas right in here. Then you've got some mid-tones, really darker mid-tones, and then our dark tone. Let me just bring our dark tone just a little bit more in, just to kind of pop that little bit of brightness there, but not too much where it looks like I said it looks fake. Okay, that doesn't look so bad to me. Actually, I'm still going to bring in some more of this darker tone. I, I'm still not overly happy with the amount of light that is still showing. And there we go. So, so that's kind of cool right there. And you can kind of see where that works. Like I said, right in here, you see the lighter striation lines, the darker here, mid-tones. Okay, so that's using the regular blend. The next thing I want to use is the blur, which actually I find works the best. So we're going to add another layer. And on this layer, I'm going to use um, spheres just because it makes it makes life a lot easier, honestly. I'm going to make one red. because I, I like the way that red works um, on this with this kind of blending. So again, we're going to hit the sphere. Uh, hold down shift to get a perfect circle and let it go. Okay, so we want to uh, G will bring... See, okay, here's the thing with... with uh, Clip Studio Paint, and I don't know if it's just me or if it happens with other people, but sometimes when I'm using the sphere shape or some of the shapes, I can't get into my um, keyboard shortcuts for whatever reason. So I have to kind of manually come in here and choose uh, the color, which already has. So I just want to, I just want to get the, the um, paint bucket tool so we can just fill that quickly. Uh, there we go. Okay, fuck it. All right, and I'm just going to click right in there. Okay, and then on this, we're again, we're going to lock the transparent pixels. What that does is it takes anything that's white in the background or anything that's white, and it stops it from any color going into it. So in other words, we have this round, round circle sphere. It's painted in with red. Anything that I do to the circle now, nothing will come out of this because all of this white here, all of this white area has been locked. Okay, so let's go back into P for our pen. And we're going to start with a pretty dark red, uh, like a crimson red, pretty dark. And we're going to come in here, and we're going to lay that down. And this is a little bit bigger, so we should be able to see better. All right, and then we're going to come here halfway through, and we're going to put some more color in there. Like I said, you don't have to worry about like it looking like funky or not not like wonderful or whatever because it's all going to be blended in it really doesn't matter uh, we're going to come up here and make some lighter tones and then over here just because actually the sphere is bigger than i originally thought i was going to do and then let's just do almost white but not quite and we're going to stop it right there okay so again if you remember the, the keyboard shortcut is j for blend and this time we're going to go in and we're going to do blur and in my opinion, this works the best. So again, we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the purple or the pink. And we're just going to take this darkest color and we're going to start to push it in to the color next to it. You can already see that that dark red is pushing itself pretty well into the, the next um, lighter red color that we have, the next mid-tone. And I'm just going to push it a little bit more and now we're going to take this layer color and we're going to push that into the darker color. And we're just going to go back and forth until we see something that we kind of like. And you can already see that with this um, blur, we're already starting to get a really, really nice gradient here, which is really what we want. We don't want something that's, we don't want something too subtle where you can't tell, but we also don't want something like screaming in your face or it's like, oh, this is not good. All right, so let's go to the next color. So we're going to take this color and we're going to push it in to the next lightest color. This does take time. And I'm, I'm not going to say that it's easy or, well, it's not hard, but it takes time. I mean, you really need to take the time to really make this come out good. But once you do, it's, it really does some beautiful stuff. It really, really does. Um, you can see all these really nice striations going on here with like, there's just what, two or three colors that we've used so far, and you really are getting some really, really nice results. And we still have two more colors to go through. All right, so let's take this color here. I just want to put a little bit more dark in there. Okay, so let's take this color and move it into the next lighter color.
And then let's pull the dark, dark color across a little bit more. Just because I don't really want, at least not at this point, I don't want it too, 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 too bright on this side yet. And we, ha we have some really, really nice dark, dark reds here to work with. Okay. All right, so let's move this now into the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the very, very light color. I've actually put a little bit too much light in here, but I will tone it down and I'll show you how to do that. I did it purposely to show you how to tone it down. So right now we're moving the paint into this light area. Now I really want to pull and we're just going to pull, 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 pull as much of that dark paint over a little bit. So you can really start to see a really, really nice shine. Um, that's not going to be like it is right now. It's going to be a lot less of a shine, but you'll, you'll notice the shine. It, it's actually really nice. And then this, see here's the darkest. So we just kind of want to pull that just a little bit and then keep pulling it across. So, yeah, this is a little too bright here. So we're just, like I said, we're going to keep bringing it over. We're going to keep bringing over some dark color until we get this brightness down a little bit. Okay, so we, we kind of this little small circle here. So we kind of have an idea of where we want that little shine to be. And that looks pretty good. So you can see here we have the dark, the dark red, then we have the mid-tone, the middle tones, and then the light tones. And it came out really nice. Okay, so let's go with uh, the textured blender. Uh, this is the, only the second time I've used this, uh, and I actually really like it. So let's add another, um, another layer. And again, we'll make another sphere. Uh, and hold down shift key to make a perfect circle. Okay, so let's fill this one. Let's make this one, let's do green. Green is kind of, I, I the last time I did this, I did it in green and it was actually kind of nice. So we're going to make it a fully saturated green to fill. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to come in and we're going to use the fill pen. It just, it's just the pen that I prefer to use to do this. You can really use whatever you want, but I just find that the fill pen or even um, the turnip pen, uh, the G pen also can work really well for this, but I just feel more comfortable with the fill pen. And you are more than welcome to use whatever it is that you like because it's your art. It's, you know, it's totally up to you what you want. You know what, somehow I got this weird thing going on here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can and I want it gone. Huh, weird. All right, so we are now on our third layer and we are going to start to put in some darker colors. First, we want to lock our transparent pixels, like I said before, so that anything in this I, anything in this white in this white area is not going to get filled. And we'll go back to the to our fill pen, and let's choose a darker color just further down. And let's do this. Let's put in. Okay, looks like I messed up. I didn't lock the transparent pixels after I told you guys to do it. Okay, so transparent pixels are locked. This is a nice dark green against this. I kind of like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we are going to do, like we've been doing, like halfway up past that to put a little bit more color in to give ourselves some different values and shades and tints and stuff to really work off of. Uh, then I want coming here. And that doesn't really show me anything. So let's try this. Okay. There are some green, light, light green, and let's come in here, and this will be the last color that we use. Okay, so now we are going to go, again, the keyboard shortcut is J, and let's click the textured blender. So now this textured blender is going to bring, obviously, like it says, texture to the uh, sphere. Now, when I first did this, it came out like when I was doing it, I, I was hating it because it just looked really messy, and you're going to notice that right now as I pull the darker color into the other color. It looks kind of messy because, again, it's textured, um, but it won't look this way once we've completed the sphere. So again, we're doing we did with everything else. We're pulling the darker color into the next lighter color. 
And with this, you have to be kind of careful because with the texture, you're getting a lot of that dark color. So, and you, and as you see, when I'm pulling in the next lighter color, it's it's blending, but not blending in the way that you would think it would. And like I said, it might look kind of like a mess or tone, like tonal dots, but it's really, trust me, it's going to look really nice when we're done. And it takes a lot less to, a lot less blending to get the same result um, with this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with the textured blender. So let's bring this color into the next lightest color. And I just want to bring some of that darker stuff also in. See here, you can really see where, <clears throat> excuse me, where the darker is really trying to like overcompensate. All right, so let's go from this lighter color now back into the darker, just so we can have kind of a cool. And then with this, you know, with this with this type of thing, just going kind of back and forth, making little shapes also is kind of cool because again, it brings out more texture. And then let's bring this color into the final highlight color here. And again, I'm just going to bring some of this dark across so that the highlight color isn't so highlighted. Okay, so now we're going to bring that high, highlight color in. And you know what? I think I'm just going to leave the highlight like right here, this little spot here. And that's your textured highlights, lowlights. It's not exactly something that I would use on a regular basis, but I mean, it does come out nice. I mean, it, it, it gives you a really nice texture. You can see all the different colors that are here. Um, not bad at all. I really enjoyed it. Okay, guys, so this is going to wrap up this video uh, for highlighting and shading. Please, in the comment section, if... Um, you've had some experience with this or you do it a different way or whatever, please let me know in the comment section. I appreciate it. And um, as always, guys, uh, until next time, keep drawing and have a great day.